Hello, everyone. Here's me, Peter, again. Um, today, I'm going to tell you a story of something that's actually quite old already, something I built at my time at the Austrian Mediathek in Vienna. It's called DVA Fidelity Analyzer, DVA for Digital Video Archive, which is the video digitization system that uh, they, they're using there. What is it? So there's, we were building a video digitization system with open source components and things that were like not officially supported by certain vendors in that domain of video recording. And while I ran tests with a, a, te a VHS video, like mainly VHS at that time, that I knew quite well, and that was actually a film recorded on a VHS, so I knew that the image information, um, should I start with, are you familiar with fields and frames? Um, who of you does not know what fields of a video are? Okay, um, so there's film where you have like a, f a frame is one image, that's called progressive, and with video um, coming from television, you have, uh, it draws lines, and it gives you like odd lines, and then the next image afterwards is the even lines. You basically have something like this, and this is where these interlacing line artifacts come from. And so you basically have information of 50 half images, so-called fields per second, and when they don't align right, you get these interlacing artifacts, like two images stuck to each other, and it kind of looks weird, and people just want to get rid of it and call it deinterlacing. So, um, we were testing our setup that we put together ourselves, and um, suddenly when recording the video after 20 minutes, had two fields stuck together that didn't belong to the same frame. And I'm like, uh, and after 20 minutes, another field was inserted, and then the, the sequence was okay again. Um, long story short, we thought it was a bug in the analog digital signal converter. Um, and I'm like, I contacted the vendor, like, your ADC is doing something. They're like, we don't have time to look into it. I'm like, okay, but when they can fix things, this is way too long, it's a fucking lightning, it's a lightning talk, sorry. So, um, bleeping. How do you test a video signal chain for field timing? So there's like a test pattern there, and I was told it's for testing image quality, but what if, I hope that, I'm, not, I'm gonna mute the audio. So, long story short, what I did was this. It's a video we created to test for interpolations in timing. Like, is a frame inserted? Is a frame dropped? Is a frame reversed, swapped? Anything that interferes with the sequence of timing up onto a field level um, can be noticed automatically. So I built and designed this for basically testing and debugging if they fix their firmware um, issue in the ADC. So what you see here is um, four frames, and here you have top and bottom fields, and you have the, um, there are color sequences that you can better see here. I put them in the new version of the video. So one frame has red, red, green, blah, blah. So this, this color pattern has a certain sequence. And when I play back that video, and we made a VHS with four hours of this, and it just blinks there. And you can see, and then we record this, and it can detect a change in duration, like field insert or dropped, field swapped or replaced, YC split, like some ADCs, they didn't clock the timing of the luminance and chrominal signal. So you had basically information from field one in black and white, but the color information from field two. And we could actually detect this with this uh, blinking sequence um, with an automated analysis. So you just play, uh, you record that video from um, one source, you record it in the other end, and if there's anything happening to that signal, insert the drop, swap, whatever, um, I can then detect this. And a text file report is generated that says, okay, in this number of frames, like 360,000 frames for four hours of VHS, look at these frames, something's odd because the timing's not right. I'll go to 
There's an online documentation I wrote back then. I hope we have, do we have internet? We have internet. Please. Jérôme? No? Um. Oh, that's me. I never believed that the internet is always there. It happened now. Um, so, there is a website. It's still called Products because I didn't know where else to put it. Basically, it's, it's a, a gallery that shows on a website that really explains like how we put this back together in 2011 and why and what are the, the issues it can detect. And the video itself is basically put together with a few shell scripts like image magic, it's like FFmpeg for, for images, and then FFmpeg to create a video sequence out of these images. And mm -hmm. now both pages, even the local one, keep filling. Um, yeah. I cannot show you the technical issues. We tested a handful of professional ADCs back then because we were looking for uh, a good one to use for, for archival preservation. And so one of them had this firmware bug where a year later the, they contacted me and they were like, it's actually not a bug. We don't care which fields belong together because we don't care about interlace timing anyways. Because if you use our ADCs and you watch that signal on a progressive television, it's a TFT, uh, you don't see these artifacts. And if you watch it on a computer, we, we don't care. So that was, that was like, okay, we now had a method of testing different AD converters, and as a side effect, the whole chain. So using virtual dub and like open source stuff for capturing, we could actually prove that the video timing can be 100% intact. We're using um, a digital to analog, like a computer playing back the digital version of the video, then analog, over through the ADC, then back to digital and recorded, and we had four hours, 360,000 frames without an issue. So we could basically prove that our self-built capture system was like timing proof. And then when you connected the tapes, you could then test the analog digital converters. In the gallery that I can't access right now, there was one of those made something very interesting. Uh, it basically, swapped the timing of two frames. So you had like the time codes um, 10, 11, 12, um, 14, 13. So it, it's, it, it, it reversed the, the, the order of certain fields and interpolated. So you see the time code of both fields. You see the number 19 and 20 interpolated into one. It's like really weird to see, but you can use this video to see um, time and image interpolation, and also the timing of luminance and chrominance. We tested this for like Digital Master to do like a fidelity test for, you can use it to test any video signal chain for uh, timing and recording fidelity. We made a VHS tape, a DigiBeta, and a DV tape over several different uh, signal versions, uh, outputs. And you can, with the detection, also tune how much noise it allows these colors to have. Because when you, when you transfer a VHS, I'm not going to get a perfect red or perfect green. And so you can, you can just tune it to not deliver too many false positives. That basically is the end of this thing. I just wanted you to know that there's something you can use for, for testing your timing and testing applications. And I still use it today for like whenever, like I'm currently switching to vRecord on Linux and um, I'm using this to make sure that the thing is proper. And I'd be very happy to take questions and comments and so on. I think we still have a few minutes. Thank you. I would ask. Uh, I would ask to you: uh, Is really uh, automated QC can replace the visual control? Because sometimes I think that uh, the human eye, experienced human eye, always can see more than the some. It's mean. It's 
need to be a combination. This is not for quality control. This is not for QC of regular um, something. This is basically like a, like a test pattern to, um, if you have a field error, you, if, even if you don't blink, I, you cannot see it with the naked eye. It'll be like, here. Uh, there. These are like, you cannot see with the naked eye what's happening there. But if you know the color combinations, so it's not for QC, it's for testing the accuracy. It's like, it's like a test pattern, it's like a time test pattern. Another question? Um, are you at liberty to speak uh, about the DPS 575 by Leech? Did it pass? Because I got that and so I, I don't like need it. testing if it's good. I like it and um, someone once said, well, if only we wouldn't have told people that it's a good converter and that, that, that it's actually good to use because now more people are buying the last ones to get on eBay. So if you find any of them, they're no good at all. Give them all to me. Any other question? I hear voices, but it's all in my head. Fine, then. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.